everyone. Today I received these beautiful white flowers and I came and I immediately put them in a vase filled with water. But as I was putting them in the water, I started to think, what part is in the water? It's only the stem, right? The rest of my flower is not in water. I started to wonder and question, hmm, do you think that the rest of the flower needs water? Do you think that the petals up here need water? They're not in the water, but they feel, they look alive. Anything that's alive needs water, right? So we're gonna do a little experiment that shows us and answers the question, do all the parts of my plant or flower really need water? For this experiment, I'm going to use five plastic cups. I'm going to use four different colors, food coloring. I have a red, a green, a blue, and a yellow. And I have some water with a measuring tool. And of course, my flowers. I'm gonna show you what we're going to do. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add five milliliters of water to each of these cups. Using my syringe, I inserted the tip of my syringe into the water and I suctioned out 20 milliliters of water. So I'm going to add five to my first cup, five to the second, five to the third, five to the fourth, and I need five more milliliters here. Now that I've added my water, I'm going to add my food coloring. I'm gonna add 10 drops of each. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 of the red. Let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of the blue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of the green. And let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of the yellow. Now to this last cup, you notice that I didn't add any colors. Does the water have a color of its own? No, it doesn't. It's clear and colorless. And we're gonna leave it like that. And let's see, why do you think I colored the rest of my cups? Because that's right, water is clear. If water is in fact going and traveling all the way up and going to the petals and going to all the parts of the flower, am I going to be able to see it? I'm not because water doesn't have a color. That's why I'm going to color each of my cups, colored the water in each of my cups, and now I'm gonna actually be able to see the water travel. So we're gonna take one stem and put it in the red. Let's take another stem and put it in the blue. I need three more. Let's take this one, put it in the green. And I have one more for my yellow and one for my white. Now we're gonna leave these flowers and we're going to watch what happens to them after they've been sitting in the flower 
after, excuse me, they've been sitting in the water with the food coloring. Now, if you have these materials at home, feel free to try it, and I'd love to see your results. But before we talk about our results, I want you to make a hypothesis. I want you to take a guess, predict what's going to happen in each of these cups. Do you think the flowers are going to stay white? Do you think these petals will stay white? Or do you think they'll change color? Think about it, make a drawing, make a prediction, and then we'll leave these for a couple of hours and then we'll come back and visit and see what happens. Okay, time's up and let's look at our flowers and see what happened. Let's start with the flower that was put inside of red food coloring. What do you guys notice? It's actually turning red. Let's look at the next one. Let's find the blue flower. Wow, that is so cool. This is the flower that was put in the blue food coloring. Next is the green. Look at that. It's really turning green. And finally, let's look at the yellow. You can see small, small streaks of yellow. And then let's look at the white. This change at all? No looks exactly like it did before. How cool is that? We actually were able to see the water travel up through the stem to all the parts of the flower. And how do we know this? We dyed our water. We changed the color of our water we made one red, and the flower turned red. We turned the water blue, and look on the outside. I'm gonna show you the other side. It's blue all over. The green changed color, and so did the yellow. Look at the back. And the white didn't change color at all. Now the question I had for you was, do all the parts of a plant, do all the parts of a flower need water? And I think we answered that. What's your answer? Yes, it does. All of it, all the parts of a flower, all the parts of a plant, all the parts do need water. But could we see that water when it was clear and colorless? No, we couldn't. We actually had to change the color. We had to color our water to be able to see it travel up. Now what I'm gonna do in this next part is I'm going to cut off a piece of the stem and slice it and show you guys a close up of what it looks like on the inside. For this part, I'm just going to take the blue because that looked like it worked the best, looked like it was the most colored. And then I'm just going to take a piece of the stem, cut it, and now let's see if we can slice our stem. Look at the inside. 
it's blue on the inside as well. Let's see if we can take it all the way up. Slice it a little bit more. Well, my fingers are blue too, but um, look at that. The inside is also blue. Think about what could be happening. What does this remind you of? How do you think this works? For this next activity, what we want to do is we want to be able to visualize, to see how water travels up through the stem and to all the different parts of the flower. For this part, you're going to need a few pieces of paper, note card, construction paper will do, a pencil, and a pair of scissors. The first thing you're going to do is take a piece of paper, draw a circle in the middle, like that, and then draw four large petals all around. So it's two petals, two more. And you end up with something like this. Now I'm going to do a close up so you guys can see exactly what I've done. Start with your paper in the center. You're going to draw your circle and don't worry about it being perfect. It doesn't have to be at all. And then four petals. It's one, two, three, and four. And now I'm going to do this a few more times. Now that you have all of your shapes, drawn onto the paper. You're going to use your scissors to cut all around the flower. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just do the best that you can. Mine is nowhere near perfect, but it will still work. If you need an adult to help you cut, that's fine. Just to recap, show you what we started with. We started with a plain square note card. We drew our flower on it. Then we cut out our flower. Now that your flowers have been cut out, what you wanna do is take each petal and fold it in to the center. One, two, three, and four. Set it to the side. Let's take, I'm only doing four flowers. You guys can do more. The second one, and I chose to do different colors just for fun, but you don't have to. Or you can. You can use more colors if you have them. And then the last one. Now this is when you are going to need your big container filled with water. Now what I'm going to do is take my pieces of paper and just drop them in. What's happening here? Look, your flower petals just opened up. Should we do it again? Okay, I'm gonna do this one more time and then I'm gonna show you guys what happens, but in slow motion. So I'm gonna take my flower, take the petals, 
fold them in. That's one. That's two. Again, any color will be just fine. I did this. I thought it was pretty. Okay, let's put them in. So let's do this one more time, but a little bit slower. Folding in my petals. It's one. Two. Third one. And the last one. in one at a time, nice and slow. Look at how pretty that is. I got all my flower petals to open. That was fun, wasn't it? Watching all the flower petals open up from our little flowers. Now let's talk about what that has to do with water traveling up through the stem of my flower or other, other plants and getting all the way to the top to each of these little petals. We can't see it, but if I were to look inside this stem, if I had a really, really big powerful microscope, I would see tiny, tiny little straws. Now those tiny little straws suck up water and they take that water all the way up. Those little straws have a name and they're called the xylem. Now how does that work? Is the flower sucking it up like a straw? Mm -mm. It's water that actually does it. It's kind of magical. Water has two properties that I want you guys to learn. Water is cohesive, that means water likes to it stick to itself, and water is adhesive, which means that it likes to stick to other things. So as the water sticks to the straw, it starts to travel because it wants to stick to all the parts of the straw and go all the way up, and all the other water molecules follow along and stick to more water. Kind of like if I have a paper towel, and if I stick my paper towel inside of the water here, will only the bottom get wet or will the water start to travel up? Let's take out my petals, put them to the side. And as I stick this in, can you see the water traveling up? Look at that, come closer. I only put the tip inside the water I only put the very, very tip in, but it got wet all the way up top. And if I leave this longer, then it, the water is gonna keep traveling and keep going up. And that's how water travels up the stem of a flower or of a plant. Water absorbs and it sticks and it hugs each other and sticks to other materials. Can't wait to see you guys try this. Good luck.